How do you fit into a society? How much of could you live on your own and still be human? Well, I think at one level, it's because it's got, you know, great stories all the way through, monsters we love, witches we know, and it's the great story of travel. And the idea of coming home is a story that is so deeply embedded in Western culture that you might go out as a hero, have your adventure and return. That's the structure of so many films, so many novels, so many books. They all go back to the Odyssey. So there's a sense, if you like, it is the myth of myths. It's the story that makes sense of travel. But why does that matter? Because of two things, two interlocking things. The first is, what does it mean to have a home? What is, it, what is, a, what is a household? And the second is, if we're interested in that sense of belonging, how much of it can you give up? before you stop being who you are. If you're not at home, who are you? And those two questions run through the Odyssey in a most profound way. The first word of the Odyssey is andra in Greek, which means man, adult male, husband, but it doesn't have a name attached to it. The first line is um, Singh muse of the man of many turns. He doesn't get a name. Why doesn't he get a name? Well, because we're interested in the gap, if you like, between what is a particular person and what is a general person. What is it to be a man, an adult, male, a husband? And what is it to be Odysseus, a very particular, very tricksy, very difficult adventurer. And the text explores that in the most extraordinary way. We never, the end, end, we never by the end finish trying to work out what it means to be a man, what it is to belong, what it is to come back. So what we get is two fascinating, if you like, mirror images. When he's away and meets monsters on his travels, he meets the non-human, the cyclops, a witch, a monster, you know, Scylla with her multiple heads, people who eat humans, people who destroy humans. And he's forced in the cyclops cave when, by his own trick, when asked his name, he says, I am no man. So he has to deny that he even has a name, or he takes on the name of no man. And we remember that first line of the poem without a name. But when he comes home, the question is, how much of his relationships does he need to form to come home? Can he come home and not have a relationship with his son? Well, no, because then the house wouldn't have someone to pass on the property to. We would break the whole idea of genealogy, the whole idea of the patriarchal household. He's got to have a relationship with his son who must be on his side. What about his mother? Well, his mother is dead. What about his father? Well, his father's nearly dead, but they're still there to fight together. What about his wife? Could he come home and find his wife is adulterous and sleeping with the suitors who are trying to have a relationship with her? Well, would that stop him being who he is? How do you fit into a society? How much of could you live on your own and still be human? The sense of what could you give up and still be human? One of the shortest episodes in the Odyssey is one of the most memorable. And I use the word memorable designedly. It's the lotus eaters. And we still talk about people who are lotus eaters. It's only a few lines long. And Odysseus and his crew come to a place where the lotus eaters give them lotus to eat. And what the lotus does is make you forget who you are. It makes you lose your memory. And the men stop wanting to go home. And they are carried by their companions who haven't eaten the lotus, crying to the ship. And this has been typical of Homer. Extraordinary short episode, huge afterlife. 
Have people imagined what is it to lose your memory of where you want to go on a travel? Would you still be human? Would you still be a person without your memories? And they'd have to be carried crying away because no memory is also no grief. Still no hope and it's no anticipation, but it's no grief. And so they're carried crying back to the ships, forced to go back to try to become human. Again, these little images that are so redolent and so powerful in the Western imagination about how much can you bear to lose? How much do you need to be a human? Thank you.